If you are ever in a situation where you feel you're gonna lose, just take the loss. It's okay. Gosh, I hate that. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code itresolves 10 yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What's going on guys and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. Today we're going to be trying out BAMP Party. Uh, now before we do, if you're not already, please make sure you subscribe. Uh, if, if you aren't already and you do subscribe, you are entered to win uh, a, a free Crimson Vow bundle on November 24th. Uh, additionally, if you're already subscribed, you're already entered to win, so good for you. Uh, but let's talk about this deck. It is BAMP Party, so you'll notice we've got a lot of the like the classic party cards. We've got Archpriest of Iona. Uh, we do have the Tej Tejuru Paragon. Uh, not sure. Linvala is in here, Squad Commander, as well as Tazri, uh, Beacon of Unity. All very, very good cards. We even have the Spoils of Adventure, which can really um, just gain you some life, draw you some cards, kind of keep you going. Uh, but in addition, we've got Jaspera Sentinel, uh, a nice little way to ramp ourselves and hopefully get us further into it. It is a rogue as well, so it does help. Uh, the Luminarch Aspirant is a cleric and hopefully going to power out some stuff in, in, uh, in terms of power and toughness onto the field. And then we have Mass Vandal, which counts as everything. Um, when it enters the battlefield, you can exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, exile target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls. That should be very, very helpful simply based on the fact that we know there's a lot of like uh, basically uh, sagas and things like that that we have to think about. Now, speaking of sagas, we do have the Bears of Lit Jara, uh, create a 2-2 blue shapeshifter creature token with changelings. So this is going to help us count towards that party mechanic. Any number of target shape shapeshifter creatures you control have base power four and power and toughness four four. That's the one. Uh, and then on three, choose up to one target creature or planeswalker. Each creature with power four or greater you control deals damage equal to its power to that permanent. So hopefully a little bit of a removal spell. Of course, it's a long term removal spell, but it does work. Uh, now we do have Temple of the Dragon Queen. As it enters the battlefield, you can reveal a dragon card from your hand. Uh, it, it enters the battlefield tapped unless you reveal a dragon card this way. Uh, or you control a dragon. As it enters the battlefield, choose a color. So the, the way that this is gonna work, obviously, is we do have changelings here that count for everything. Uh, so the idea is this is basically a, a tricolor land for us, which is quite nice. So we'll see if it works out. I've got no idea, I haven't tested this, but we're gonna have a good time with it and just enjoy some Bant party. So let's jump into game one. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. Uh, now, this isn't a super exciting hand, but it is an OK one. Uh, we've got the Aspirin into Linvala here, so I feel like that's OK to keep. We also do have the Masked Vandal, which is just helpful. So we'll see what we can do. Um, not every day you see Masked Vandal in standard, but I actually really like it. So I'm kind of curious to see how that card in particular plays out. Uh, we most likely will lead on the Deserted Beach and then play the Luminarch Aspirant turn two off of one of these. We don't really have to worry about this coming into play tapped just because we don't have a turn one play. So it's kind of fine. All right, cool. Uh, yep. Still going to follow the same play pattern. There's no reason not to. We will need to throw this out for green here just to ensure that we've got all colors of mana, uh, available to us, but we can certainly do that. That's no problem at all. Uh, see if they attack in. Sure. All right. Well, that would have been much better turn one, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and get this out. Uh, this does count, obviously, as the cleric, <clears throat> uh, which is one of our four party members taken care of. Uh, next turn, we can play Linvalo uh, or Mass Vandal and the Priest. Uh, but I don't know. I kind of like the idea of playing Linvalo, but we'll see. I mean, that's very good. Yeah, dude, you got it. Um, oh, very mean. Okay, yeah, I mean, can't do anything about that. Uh, what that does allow us to do is Mass Vandal uh, at some point if we've got the uh, target for it. Uh, let's do this. And now that we don't have a creature on the field, let's do this and let's do this. Um, Let's put the counter there. 
Um, Jorn is very scary, uh, but can't do too much about it. We'll just have to push through. Um, this sets us up for a much stronger Linvala the next turn. The problem with just playing Linvala is she's not as good on her own. Um, she's good at protecting other things, but we can't really do that at the moment, so <laughs> that's terrifying. Uh, yeah. Really? Okay. Uh, yeah. I think we just block here and hope for the best. <laughs> uh, we can actually kill this, which is nice. Wow. Okay. Alright, yeah, you got it. Um... So we do have the Mass Vandal that does allow us to kill this, which is gonna come in handy. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, since we kind of literally have to. Uh, yep, do it. Get that out of there. Um, it's just kind of nice to have a built-in like fix for that. Not fix, but you know what I mean. Um, I think we have to go for this so we can kill the Jorn. As unaffective as that feels, truthfully, um, because they can just kill it, I'm sure, at some point, like, that just makes them have to double think, or double check the math, double think. Think twice. I don't know why I can't speak this morning. <laughs> uh, all right, no attacks. This is very good because it untaps itself. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's hope they just blank on a draw here. Uh, they don't have... At the moment, they can't even activate this. Okay, now they can. That's not good. Um, all right. Attack with Jorn. I will definitely block it. <laughs> um, we do have the Spoils of Adventure here, which would be kind of nice to... Okay. Wow. Okay, yeah. Interesting. Um... I think we have to block like this, right? So we get to kill the Jorn. Uh, and the... The Whatchamadiddle. Um, <laughs> I can't think of the name. <laughs> the Lotus Cover. Um, I'm gonna play this out. It's gonna spread our board out just a little bit here. Um, it's actually kind of an interesting game. All right. It also provides us, the squad commander is a good blocker for the Faceless Haven if we need it. Uh, alternatively, we can just, you know, triple block it, but I kind of like the idea of just killing it with the squad commander. Um, we do have the Spoils of Adventure that should be able to keep us in this, um, but we'll see. We're obviously not doing damage to them yet, which is kind of the scary part. Um, the, the lair of the Hydra is also terrifying, um, but we can double block it at some point. Oh, interesting. <laughs> they tapped wrong. That's great. Uh, they just allowed the auto tapper to go for it. They should have tapped the layer, uh, but they didn't. So <laughs> that's great. All right. So uh, we've got options here, but I. I... <sighs> hmm. I don't know what the right play is. I think it's Linvala. I'm not positive, to be honest. Um, I'm not going to attack in. We are going to block or uh, need to block here. Um, Linvala does give us the ability, though, to give Hexproof and Indestructible. Uh, choo choose ch Hexproof or Indestructible. Creatures you control gain that. So we actually can just have a free kind of blocking turn here if we need to. Um, we're setting ourselves up for a very good spoils of adventure though which is the important thing all right so now they can do quite a bit if they'd like uh truthfully though let's see it just becomes an xx which just means that instead of doing any kind of silly shenanigans we could have just blocked with a one one and would have been fine wow Wow, okay. I did not expect them to just give up. Um, 
Fair enough. Guys, we did it. Uh, that was interesting. Let's jump into game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we can keep this. It's not amazing, but it does have a nice one into two into potentially three, depending on what we can get down. Oh, perfect. All right, so let's throw you out there. Let's get the Sentinel down. A uh, little worried about seeing the ice tunnel here, just because not only does that signify Demir, but snow control, like there's a lot of stuff they could have here. Um, but I think that this is okay. I mean, we've got, uh, we got some good stuff. We got it. Um, they're going to have a million kill spells though. <laughs> Just so you know, uh, potentially sweepers incoming as well, which is terrifying. Um, we are going to just go ahead and throw out the Luminarch Aspirant here. There's not a big reason not to. Um, and my assumption is they're going to end up killing it. I guess they're considering killing the Sentinel instead. I mean, I would definitely kill the Aspirant, but you do you. It's fine by me. Um, opponent really considering options here. I feel like this is a relatively straightforward one. Oh, it's rogues. Oh, lovely. All right. This does have reach, so let's just leave this up. Um, and now we know for sure that they are going to have some point and click removal, I imagine. Um, but on top of that, we also know that sweepers might be a little less likely, uh, which is quite good. So they do get to mill two cards still with this attack, which is why that's a good attack. Um, <laughs> and I think the play for us is definitely going to be Limvala here. Uh, we're going to want to protect what we've got as best we can. All right, pass priority, homie. What you got going on? Opponent really considering options here. Um, yeah, I mean, we just just do the thing. Um, that's fine. I wouldn't. I mean, OK, um, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, let's play this for blue and let's throw Linvala out there. Uh, let's do this. I'm actually going to put the counter here um, and attack in. There's no reason not to. Linvala uh, most likely will just block here, but then we can sack it to protect the aspirant if we need to. Um, and in response to a kill spell on Linvala, we definitely just do that. Um, but we'll see what we can do here. Pona is like super thinking about stuff here, which is fine. I mean, they absolutely should. But I'm wondering if this is just like their first time playing rogues. Um, <laughs> Good news for us is rogues, I don't think is quite as good in the meta as it used to be. So, um, do they even have a land? I don't believe they've played one, so that might be helpful. I don't want to be that guy that says here go. Um, okay, they do have a land. Sure. Kind of surprised they didn't go for a second blue, but that's fine. And go. Really heavily considering options. I feel like Rogues is relatively straightforward. Uh, maybe not, but still. I don't think it should be this difficult. Um, I'm not going to be that guy, but it's so tempting. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm not going to be that guy. That doesn't help anything ever. But, <laughs> all right, cool. Uh, so now we know they don't have blue open, which is helpful because they don't have a counter spell. All right, very nice. Very, very nice indeed. Okay, uh, let's go for white here. And I think we just squad commander. It's going to give us some tokens, which is helpful. Um, I think we put the counter here. So we can attack in here because um, we do kind of want to keep the damage going if we can. This isn't like a huge attack by any means, and I know that, um, but it is continuing that pressure. 
uh, which just means that they're going to have to consider that. Now, these guys are essentially regulated to only attacking because they this is a rogues build, so <laughs> chances are they're not going to have a lot of ground stuff, uh, which is fine by me. I don't really care. But, uh, and I'm wondering, the Bears of Lichara, this is honestly a card that I have never used because it didn't ever seem that good. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but I'm wondering if truthfully this should have been down before the squad commander uh, for a number of different reasons, but chief among which it's long-term a removal spell, so it gets rid of one of these, uh, assuming our creature was to stick around. So I, I don't know. I mean, perhaps we will see. Uh, but regardless here, we still have the Limvala. They're going to attack in. All right. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, you got it. They got a bunch of lands and a spoils, which spoils is a little sad to, to see go, but interesting. Do they have a sweeper? It's like the only thing I could think of. Uh, yeah. Um... All right, so we do this just to give this indestructible. It doesn't matter, but we do get to keep this. Cool. Um, let's temple black, I guess. It doesn't really matter. I don't know why I picked black. Why did I pick black? <laughs> that was so dumb. <laughs> also, it's not a try land. You pick a color. Uh, oh, well. All right, we uh, we got the bear down, so that's nice. And we still have something on the field to deal damage. So like, I feel like we're okay. Uh, maybe not, maybe they can just kill all of our stuff. That would be annoying. I would like a non-land card. That would be fantastic. A spoils would be kind of sick. Yeah, that, do it. That seems good. Um, I guess we just play this for blue. I feel like blue is probably the better option. Um, and opponent is super, super slow on the uh, decision making here. Like, if you're not going to kill it, just let it resolve. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to attack in first here. I don't know that I want to play the squad commander yet. I'm debating. If I was going to play it now, like before combat would have actually been the best time, but like I want to finish this game as quickly as we can. So I want to get power down. I mean, seriously? Sorry, guys, this is going to take a little while. Um, <laughs> I don't mean to be super impatient, but when you've only got a few cards available to you, I feel like this isn't really... And you're just running the clock out. <laughs> I'm assuming they either don't have anything or... are, like, not there? I, I don't know. This is kind of ridiculous. Can we win? They have... Like... Go. Just do it. Do it. All right, let's try and play the squad commander. I guess it works out now. I'm just trying to finish the game at this point. because <laughs> This is really annoying. Um, we'll play one more game after this, obviously, and hopefully we can get another win. But I'll be honest, I kind of like this deck like a lot. Um, it's not perfect and i would i would suggest that against a number of different decks it's not that well suited um because it's a very straightforward kind of linear list uh really the only major interaction i guess is the bears but like i don't know it's uh it's kind of fun i like the i'll be honest the party mechanic when i initially saw it i hated it i thought it was going to be terrible and i don't think it's that good Having played party decks, like, Coco Party is really fun and historic. Like, there's a number of things that you can do with party that are actually really, really cool. Um, not perfect, 100%, but very, very fun. Alright, do you lose yet? We are just drawing a lot of lands. Um...
Why did I choose this? Can I just say no? Could I have just said no? Did I just kill my own 4-4? Four -four? Oh my gosh. Guys, how are we doing today? I hope you're doing well. It's great to see you. Uh, here we are. Just hanging out. Just having a good time. Um, <laughs> oh, silliness. Silliness, silliness. Uh, I do not give up in these situations because I find it really frustrating that they're willing to, to do this. Because uh, I think that this is just extraordinarily rude. All right, there we go. We got the win. That was ridiculous. Don't ever do that. If you are ever in a situation where you feel you're going to lose, just take the loss. It's okay. Gosh, I hate that. All right, moving on. All right, guys, here we are. This is going to be our last game, most likely. Uh, and this is a bit of an odd one, uh, only because we don't have an untapped white source, but I think it is a, a relatively easy keep. We definitely have turn two Luminarch Aspirant. If we draw an untapped white source, we actually have the Archpriest on turn one, so I, I think it's worth it to keep. Uh, we then, of course, have Tazari uh, later on. I'm going to go ahead and play this now. Uh, it guarantees us the white source next turn, which obviously we need. Um, it should be able to help us get some stuff out here. Um, throw you out. Let's Luminarch Aspirant. Be mana efficient for sure. And there we go. Next turn, if we would like, uh, we have Archpriest. We also have the Masked Vandal, so we can double up here. Um, now, the, the Vandal doesn't really kill anything at this point, but uh, that's kind of okay. I mean, it can kill the treasure, but we don't have anything in the graveyard, so... There's an extra white source. I actually really like that, so let's do that. Let's play that Archpriest. Um... I'm gonna play the Vandal. It's not gonna do very much, but it powers this up a little bit, which I think is kind of worth it. Uh, and I actually think the right play is gonna be to put the counter on the Vandal, um, just because then it becomes a 2-4, uh, which is pretty helpful. They didn't have to do that. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> that's really funny. It forced them into it. That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, they didn't need to do that. It wasn't going to blow anything up. We didn't have anything. Uh, if you So you have to exile a creature card from your graveyard to do that. And we don't have a creature card in our graveyard. So they just sacrificed that for absolutely no reason. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> uh, cool. Yeah, dude. Easy block. Uh, it's kind of pointless. Um, I guess we'll play this out. Play this out. And Tazri Beacon of Unity is here. Um, that's just a real good card. Okay. Uh, let's actually put it here. This is powerful enough on its own. We don't really have to worry about it. Um, I think I attack in with the Archpriest. We've got two of them. So if they want to block with the adversary, that's fine. If not, they're going to take three. So that's pretty good. Um, top six cards of your library, you can reel up to two. So that's going to be really helpful, uh, theoretically. And we do need... So the Temple of the Dragon God is very good for Tazri. So now I'm kind of seeing that interaction come to life a little bit here. So that's actually quite good. Yeah, dude, go for it. All right. <laughs> oh, very nice. Um, guess we'll get second green here. We actually can kicker this, so let's kicker it. Ooh, lots of good stuff. Um, we'll take this just because squad commando is super good. Um, if you have a full party, let's go here. I'm actually going to go here and here. All right. Uh, let's attack here and here. Cool. 
I mean, that seems pretty good. Uh, we can technically win next turn, so that's super solid. Ooh, never mind. Heck yeah. Dude. Um, actually, no, we can still kind of get there, but that's very solid. Very, uh, very, very good card. Awesome. Um, play it for blue. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we actually get to play both here, which is kind of cool. Get lots of things. Um, these get first strike. So let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. And let's do this. I'm just going to power these bad boys up. All right. Um, I think we just all attack. Does this make sense? Let's not attack here or here. Ah, I don't know. Ah, screw it. Yeah, let's just do it. <laughs> I, it doesn't matter that much. Like, they kind of just have to block a lot. Um, they're pretty much forced into blocking So they're just dead. That was a bad block. They could have they could have lived. That was a really bad block, but hey, we did it. Heck yeah, go us. Let's talk about this deck. All right, Bant Party, what do we think? Uh, I think it's a very linear deck that actually plays quite well. Um, I really like it. I Again, the party mechanic was not one that I was really stoked on when we first got it. Uh, it wasn't something that I think was very good in standard, and I still don't think it's necessarily great. But it's very fun. It's a very straightforward, just good party list. Like, I, I like it. Uh, I think it's got a little bit of interaction and tech uh, with the Masked Vandal and, of course, the Bears of Litjara, both of which I think were actually pretty good in this list. I think maybe at their best. Uh, I don't know. I liked it. I thought it was really fun, and we did go undefeated with it, which is kind of sick. So, yeah, positive. I like it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like on the video. It would mean a lot. Uh, subscribe if you're not already as well. That would also be very helpful. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Bye.